What's going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Ball, and welcome to 10 Count. On today's edition, I'm talking to the reigning and defending NWA Women's Champion, Camille. How are you doing today? I'm good. Look, it's a beautiful day, so I'm doing good. I know. I wish I was outside. I'm, I'm in a stuffy room. I but, can't but... do it. I can't do the rooms. So I got to be outside. I know it's that time of year. I, I remember being outside for other interviews, and someone's like, "Is that a what? What, what, what do you got on back there?" I'm like, "I'm I'm doing a cookout right now while talking <laughs> to you." But right now, you're having a good time. Hopefully, no mosquitoes get you. But there are a few. There oh, are there few. are a few. Oh no! Well, body slam them, I guess. Give them a good, old, good elbow drop, and then you'll be good. You'll be good. But on June third and fourth, coming up with NWA, the Crockett Cup, a pres. Prestigious Cup, a tag team tournament to determine pretty much who's the greatest tag teams in the world. But yet, on this card also, we of course, we have you defending your gold against Natalia Markova. Now, this is going to be interesting because the last time you guys wrestled, well, it was a draw. So now it's coming up again. We're going to see what we can get because I don't want to draw. Nobody wants to draw. We want to see a clear-cut winner. And right now, you're going on about over 720 days as I talk to you right now as the NWA Women's Champion. So before we get into that amazing title reign, what can fans expect from you and Markova? Because again, you two, I feel like, are the staple of the NWA Women's Division. So what you expect is for me to not take her as lightly as I took her last time. I think that, you know, I've always kind of seen Natalia's girl with, you know, big TNA, if you know what I'm saying, and, you know, just walking around, you know, without a care in the world type thing. And I just was like, I'm going to easily take this girl down. And that was not the case, unfortunately. And I, I did have to learn my lesson the hard way. Um, you know, the fans, they were chanting, you know, five more minutes, five more minutes. I've been the champion for over 720 days for a reason. I'm not stupid, folks. She put me in a very bad position, okay? And I was, <laughs> I had to regroup. I had to regroup there and... um yeah, I'll give it to her. She took me to the limits, but as an athlete my whole life, as just a, a smart person, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, that might be a lot. But <laughs> I, just, um, I learned from my mistakes, right? I, 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 I have to I, – so I regrouped, got a new game plan together, and I'm going into the Crockett Cup. Can't tell you everything that I'm ready to do, but I am going to give it my all. Because I am not going out of there without still being the one time NWA Women's Champion. I love to hear that because recently in women's wrestling, it feels like everybody is losing their championships. Bianca Belair lost hers. She was on a pretty important run too. Jamie Hayter lost her. Jade Cargill lost hers. So this kind of like a streak going of out of all the major companies, champions yeah. are losing. But obviously you going over 720 days as NWA Women's Champion. How does that feel? Because again... We're talking about title reigns in professional wrestling, and usually it's like a hot potato situation. Oh, I have it, and then I lose it. I have it, and I lose it. But this is different. This is a whole you're, – you're going on over a year plus as champion. This is incredible. I think June 6th or 7th will be two years. Wow. Two years. So, yeah, it's it's funny because when I first got the title, it um, I mean, admittedly so, I had to remember it all the time. To, you know, to take it with me to, to indie shows. And I was like, oh, do I have it? And now, you know, if that day ever comes that I don't have it, it's going to feel very weird. It's going to feel weird coming out even just on my entrance without something around my waist. Right. So it's just, it, it, it's a part of me now. It, it is something that, you know, not only do people identify the NWA with and me with, I, I, I identify myself with. I'm the champ. So, like, it's just, it's... It's who I am now. It's what I do. And um, I don't know. I just don't. I don't. I go a lot based on my intuition. You know what I'm saying? And I don't feel like that's changing anytime soon. So how does it feel, though, when you originally were champion? And again, you brought it up where you're like, oh, did I bring my title? Oops, I forgot it. Oh, I have it. But now it is part of who you are. So, you know, in the future, we'll, you know, we'll say like 2000 days from now when maybe, maybe, maybe someone beats you. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you could be having it until the day you die. But <laughs> in the reality, though, the part of you being ripped off of you and given to someone else, do you feel like that's going to mentally do something to you? Because as champion... It, this has become you. This is who you are. Without that, who are you? 
I mean, I still feel like, you know, at the end of the day, before I got the title, I don't feel like I needed the title. People okay. knew me at first as Nick Aldis's, you know, insurance policy. And then I, I started, I think I had like three or four matches with the NWA before I got the title. Yeah. Um, but I think the, I'm going to, you know, this might sound vain, but I think the fans were interested to see what I, whether they thought I was good, bad, whatever. They were interested. They wanted to see what I was going to do. And um, they just wanted to see what was going to happen with me as a personality, as a wrestler, as a character. And so I got to remember that when the day comes, if the day comes, that that title's off of me, um, I'm still that person. I'm still interesting. I'm still some someone that people want to watch, someone that people want to know more about. Yeah. And so I just have to remember that I always have, you know, that's always there. Uh, you remind me of, I don't know why, but Diana Perezzo, where she had the championship in Impact for so long, and then she lost mm -hmm. it. And it felt like Impact at least pushed her to the side for a second. And I'm like, how could you do that to someone? This person's been <laughs> the face of your company for so long. Then now in Impact, she got it back. But it was one of those moments of how do you – push someone to the side who's been the face of your brand as and i feel like you know nwa i think of you i think of tyrus like there are there are a couple of people even markova there, there are people maxi and paler as well there are people who are in my brain nwa and without mm -hmm. without you having the championship it'd be really bizarre but with aew forbidden door coming up you know we have jamie Hayter losing the championship and we had jade cargill losing the championship but we have new champions. We have Tony Storm, you know, with the title. We have Chris uh, Statlander, the championship. Could we see you kick down that door and show up at Forbidden Door? Because this isn't just like a New Japan thing anymore. I think this is just a universal everyone come on in and have a good time and wrestle. You, Tony Storm, sounds pretty good to me. What date is that, Forbidden Door? That would be the end of June, uh, the, the last weekend of June. I don't think it was seeing me. I mean, forbidden door there. <laughs> <laughs> Going on vacation? <laughs> June, June, 20, like, June 25th. June 25th would be the uh, the exact date in Toronto. Let's put it this way. You know, when, uh, in wrestling, it comes down to a lot of times it comes down to dates. A lot of dates are involved. I was going to say also, so, Cash and Creative might have something to do with it as well. Uh, well, I... I, I I'm just gonna put this one down to dates. Okay. That's, that's all you need. All you need to know about that. This one comes down to dates, and I would I love to be there. Absolutely, I would love to take on some new challengers, and I put I will put my title on the line if when I still have it. But um, yeah, I mean, I would love to. Fit, I guess Jamie Hayter's hurt now, but Tony Storm, Jade, you know, I, I'm willing to take all of them on. I can't wait. I think it's, I think we need to see this. I think because you know the NWA AW oh, relationship was there. I, you. I saw on Twitter uh, actually that because someone um, tweeted that Layla Hirsch is coming back, and they tweeted it with the picture of me and her from yep. when I showed up AEW, and I was like round two because the first round was a great. If I do say so myself. So you versus Layla one more time, I think, needs to happen. As again, again, all these options for you are on the table, and I feel like that there is opportunities for you just everywhere, everywhere. And recently, though, your boss, Billy Corgan, uh, of NWA at least, he is always sharing his opinions, and either you love him or you hate him. I love him. So – I love the fact that he will share his true thoughts and not worry about what people think, and I love it. So this is what he said. He said, if you're not going to watch – just talking about Tyrus. If you're not going to watch him, then you're not a wrestling fan. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. But this comment got a lot of backlash, and now the question is, do you believe that politics in America – have just blinded people to anything. It doesn't matter if you like Pepsi or Coke or you like hamburgers or hot dogs. If you are a Republican or a Democrat, it turns into this like, if you like hot dogs and you're a Republican, then you're a terrible person. And that's the weirdest thing to me is it's a wrestling program. He's a bad guy. The point of view is to not like him. And Billy Corgan loves the idea of old school wrestling of mm -hmm. Tyrus is the bad guy. So when Tyrus loses, everyone will rejoice. Yay, he lost the belt. That's the whole point of all this. But yet, the way Billy speaks and the way people react to the way he speaks, it turns into like this this bomb that goes off every time. Why is that the case? Why can't people understand that Tyrus is a performer and he brings a lot of eyeballs when he's on Fox every night holding the NWA championship? 
Well, I think Billy likes being polarizing. Uh, it's you know something he's done his in, entire life, and it's mm. why he's sold the amount of albums he sold and has the amount of fans that he has. Um, so there's there's uh, a reason for that. As far as Tyrus is concerned and politics and all that, I don't think that politics and wrestling should be intertwined. But you know what? It's life, and people are human beings, and feelings are a very strong thing feelings are a very real thing and if someone feels strongly one way and it affects this over here so be it and i don't agree and i'll say this completely i completely disagree that if you aren't a tyrus fan you aren't a wrestling fan i completely disagree with that statement um my personal polarizing statement would be if you don't enjoy the nwa women's division then you then you might not like wrestling because that is something that I can guarantee that you will have a good time watching. You will enjoy the women's wrestling in the NWA. And like is I just I I think that, you know, we're hard hitting, we're feisty, we tell good stories in there. And um I don't know. It's I don't want to say this and it's gonna come off bad, but I'm whatever, I'll say it. Even if you don't think someone is a good, quote unquote, like technical wrestler in our division, the matches still are fucking so fun to watch. Like, I don't know. Like, they're just they're just like I said, they're feisty and intense. And so I I will say that if you if if you you know what I if you don't want to watch anything else, give the NWA women's division a chance. Fast forward to everything. I don't care. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care. But watch our women's division, not just me our whole women's division because those girls kill it every time they go out there and they want to put everything on the line and they give it their all and they deserve your attention. So just give them a chance. I agree. I agree with that. I think, uh, yeah, the, the state Billy's statement is one thing. That's his opinion. But the fact that the backlash always seems to happen every time Billy does an interview is interesting. Like I talked to Billy three times and every time I talked to Billy, it was like, boom, a bomb would go off. And I'd be like, he just spoke. All he did was use words in, in his mouth and boom, suddenly everyone was all up in arms about it. But I don't know. I don't know if it's I don't know what it is. I, I, and actually, I was recently at the AEW Double or Nothing press conference and MJF said, do you know, only 7 percent of AEW fans. It's, he's like, it's scientifically proven are on Twitter. And I'm like, OK, I, if that's not true, whatever. But I like to believe that. Because if someone's, <laughs> if someone's insulting Billy Corgan on Twitter, well, that's only 7% of the people uh, out there. You know, are they buying tickets? Are they going to the NWA? Are they watching the pay-per-views? Are they watching the weekly shows? All in all, I think NWA is doing a great job. So, you know, they can do it. Anyone can do it the hell they want with their money. But as long as NWA is still existing and doing its thing and having a great Crockett Cup on June 3rd and 4th, well, then I'm here for it. Then I'm here it is for that. A, it's going to be – that's a Crockett Cup. Other than, I will say, like – NWA, 70s, 71s, and 2s, and 3s, you know, those big shows, I would say that's our quote-unquote WrestleMania. Those are our, you know, big shows for the year. Our second biggest show is Crockett Cup. So that is something. And, 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 it is in North Carolina, my home state. So it it's my first time that I will be defending the title. I think it's the first time I'm defending the title in North Carolina, actually. But I could be wrong. But I know for a fact, yep, 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 a fact that it'll be my first time defending it on a pay-per-view with the NWA. Um, the one Crockett Cup we had, I believe it was in Charlotte. Uh, it was Nick Aldis versus Marty Skrull, and I was just Nick's insurance policy at that time. Oh. Now we're back, what is this, two, three years later? Yeah. I think it might be three. I don't know, whatever. Um, And I've been a champion for two years. And I'm going to be defending the title. And so, like, this whole, like, full circle moment is is happening this weekend. So, I'm everybody just needs to watch because it's going to be great. I can't <laughs> wait. It's going to be a good time all around. But all, let's move on to something else. In the WWE, Trish Stratus, who's someone who I thought would be gone forever, has returned, has made a comeback. And it seems like she's mm -hmm. better than ever. Is it shocking to you to see someone like her return and be even better than she once was? A shock, no. Will I say that I think that it would have been very easy for her to, you know, completely fall off and just live the rest of her life kind of away from the scene and not do wrestling ever again and probably therefore not get better at wrestling because she hasn't been training, you know? Yeah. That would have been very easy to do. But 
there's this thing about wrestling and even when you hate it you love it <laughs> and so i think that there was a part of her that was probably definitely missing in so when wwe called and gave her an opportunity um good for her for making the most of it and obviously training and getting in there and maybe some ad adding some new stuff to her arsenal i've I don't even have cable, so I've only seen clips on Twitter and stuff. Yeah. Like, I can't say I've seen all match. But, um, you know, if you're saying that she's gotten even better in the ring and stuff like that, that's that's awesome. I, I just think that she's also proven, I mean, this is a whole kind of different topic, that I don't I don't I have no idea if she's a mom. She's I a mom. She, she, there you go. She's proven that moms can get out there and still do their thing. Yeah. So shout out to the moms and shout out to Trish Stratus. Yeah, because there was a – I think it was a few years ago when Mickey James got laid off by the WWE, and they put all their crap in a trash bag and sent it to her house, and some of the stuff wasn't even hers. Um, this this argument of ageism came up, and it was like, oh, well, women need to look like they always looked like when they were 20. But men don't need to always look like they did when they were 20. It's okay if they get a gray beard or lose their hair or things like that. But it was like the women, it was, oh, you have to look you know, the same way you did, like. That's a little bit strange to me, the double standards there. But with Trish Stratus, she looks just like she did. You know, you could, you could, everyone gets a little older here and there, but she looks amazing. It's not like you suddenly showed up and you're like, oh my, that, that's just, that's Trish Stratus? Oh, like, that, like, you know, she's still turning boys into men. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I like a fine wine. That's great. But I, I will say there's definitely that pressure there. I mean, for the past, Four or five years. I've gotten Botox in my forehead. Guess what? I haven't gotten Botox since December. Okay? Because I said, screw it. I'm a human being, and I have expressions. And if I <laughs> age, I age. And if y'all don't like it, then y'all don't like it. Because this is me, and that's it. So that's where I'm at with it. If y'all don't want to see my old ass out there, <laughs> oh, well. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be out there doing whatever I want to do for however long I want to do it. I, I think you're the word old the the phrase old ass I don't think uh makes any sense for you but sure well you can use those terms that's on, that's on you that's on you that's, that's hilarious uh, in wrestling though it seems like celebrities keep showing up everywhere and obviously Billy Corgan is a celebrity uh, in music and professional wrestling but I was in Puerto Rico I saw Bad Bunny take on Damian Priest in an incredible match Logan Paul showing up um there is many many people is there a celebrity that you just would love to try to challenge you for the NWA Women's Championship and because I think everyone loves to see celebrities come in and be like, I can do this, and then just get wiped out. You said woman, and that changed because I'll, I'll say Oh, man, one. too. Well, because I, I have a friend, actually. Uh, he won't be well that well-known because he's a, a, a baseball player, but his name is Eric Thames. And um, he, he's a huge wrestling fan. He loves wrestling. And he even said, he was like, my finisher would be called the F-bomb. And like... And whenever I tell, he hasn't got to see me wrestle in person yet. And so I tell him that you need to um, come out to a show and then we'll, you know, plan something where you, where you come into the ring and then boom, 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 get in the ring. And that's yeah, how we wow. can start like a feud or something. But that's a man. Let, let me think for one second. Let me think of a female celebrity. You know who would be funny and would be great? I mean, not great wrestler, but <laughs> would be entertaining for the thing. Cardi B, because I think she likes wrestling. I think I, I've, yes. So, Let's go, Cardi B. Let, <laughs> let's get Cardi B in the ring and see what she got because she knows she knows a little bit about wrestling. So I mean, she she might surprise some people. It's funny mm -hmm. you say that because I went to Puerto Rico and I interviewed Liv Morgan and Raquel uh, Rodriguez, and they actually said Cardi B and uh, Megan The Stallion would be two women they'd want to take on. And they'd be a great tag team. They'd be a great tag team. And lucky for yeah. me, lucky for me, the interview went a little viral and TMZ picked it up. So I was happy about that situation for me. Nice. So hopefully, you know, you and Cardi B can get in the ring in NWA. Billy Corgan can open up his checkbook and make this happen <laughs> at, a, at a future NWA pay-per-view. I will reach out to Billy. We'll get this going. Well, don't you worry. Yeah. Well, good luck with that one, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I think he'll do it. Maybe. He might know some people. I think he might know some he people in the music, music industry. industry. He's in he the might, music industry. Maybe he can pull some strings. You're right. I, I think he might know a few people. I think he might know yeah. a few people. But uh, June, June 3rd and 4th, though, this Rock, Crockett Cup is happening. If you love wrestling, if you love tag team wrestling, if you love NWA, I think this is the event for you. As I brought up that weird quote from earlier, but if you're, if you're not watching 
NWA and you're not watching it and enjoying it, then you're not a wrestling fan because in fact that you guys are putting out your heart, your soul, everything is going out there to entertain the fans and the masses. And I got to say, this is an event you want to check out again, you and Markova, who I absolutely love as well. She's great. You know, I, I love both of you so much. I've interviewed both of you, I think about three times now, and both of you always bring something new to the table, and I always appreciate it. So remember, Jude, third and fourth, check it out. And to be a Crockett Cup, folks, this weekend, baby. This weekend. This weekend. That's I'm, right. I'm pumped. You're pumped. We're all pumped. And you will continue with your reigning and defending your championship. We're going to keep pushing forward. We'll, you know, we'll hit the Roman Reigns a thousand days. Then we'll hit 2,000 days. And then no, 3,000 days. I got uh, I gotta beat um, Moolah's uh, record of like 10 million days or whatever. <laughs> oh, you know what? I don't think we have enough time on Earth to ever beat <laughs> yeah. anything Moolah ever did in the record books. So good luck on being number two for the rest of your life. But hey, yeah. at least you're number two. And not number three. All right. So <laughs> all in all, Camille, thank you so much for being here on 10 Count, promoting this amazing event. Again, June 3rd and 4th, Crockett Cup. You and Markova are going to kill it one more time. I draw last time, not this time. We not need a time. winner, and it's going to be you. Unless That's I interview right. Markova, and I'll, I'll say the opposite. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, have a great day. Enjoy the mosquitoes biting your arms. I've been yeah. Seafall. She's Carmel. Have a great day. And hey, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah.